Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Heart Folk at Genesis Dev Con. We are live at uh, Bengaluru uh, at Genesis Dev Con, India's largest blockchain conference yet. I'm Shantanu and today I'm going to meet somebody who has been spearheading the uh, new technology initiatives with the largest company in India, uh, Reliance and Geo Infocom. Um, I have with me uh, Mr. Dilip Krishnaswamy. He's the, the vice president of uh, the, the company and he has been working on some cutting edge work with Reliance trying to reach the entire masses with blockchain. Welcome to the show Dilip ji. Wonderful to have you on board. Uh, just a clarification. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are actually working on cutting edge technologies at Reliance. So, yeah. Um, and just uh, another guy helping, uh, you know, make <laughs> yeah. a difference. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there are a lot of people working in, in Reliance uh, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the, under the leadership of uh, Dilip here. Uh, Dilip, thanks, thanks for being on, on Hard Fork. It's, it's a pleasure here. Thanks to IBC Media for arranging this for us. Uh, there was a huge buzz, you know, in the, in the market, you know, in, on the, in the papers, you know, when uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani, you know, announced in one of the AGMs that, you know, we are getting into blockchain and, uh, you know, Geo is going to come up with, uh, you know, something very big and uh, net biggest network on blockchain in India. So I would love to know what exactly is the vision behind this and uh, what is being done by Reliance in this area. Yeah, so, um, you know, the overall vision is still left to top level management to kind of uh, think about and uh, uh, make a difference to India and things like that. Mm -hmm. but generally, I mean, what we see is the future of infrastructure is going to be virtualized mm -hmm. and uh, potentially distributed as well, reaching to the edge. Mm -hmm. And that is a transformation that has happened because of uh, an area called network functions virtualization. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, the telecom, in the telecom world, uh, you know, you had middle boxes that were maybe some Intel servers, and uh, one in one machine would talk, would tunnel packets to another machine, and so on, and you'd go all over the place. And every time there's a change in the protocol, uh, you'd have to. Bring, yeah, yeah, you have to take one box in and put, put another one in. So yeah. people said, hey, why don't we just have, uh, you know, a little data center and just, you know, change the virtual machine. And now, Absolutely. nowadays we uh, use containers yeah. uh, uh, to actually, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, there's a trend towards what's called disaggregation, which is trying to create, uh, create lots of microservices. Mm -hmm. uh, little, little functions. If you've written C, you've written little functions and uh, some function may want, have to scale out more than another okay. and things like that. So, um, uh, in that flavor, we have been developing a microservices-based uh, okay. um, uh, programmable infrastructure. All right. So, in that context, uh, and we know uh, the microservices can be uh, applied for anything. You know, some data is coming and you want to do some machine learning on it. Mm -hmm. Or you want to execute some prediction algorithm on it as it's coming in. Or, or as the data is being uh, processed, you want to um, uh, record the transaction on a blockchain. You want mm -hmm. to execute a smart contract with some intelligent logic. Yeah. There may be some multiple stakeholders that are um, uh, uh, that are um, uh, that are responsible for this information, and mm -hmm. so they they would want to actually uh, jointly execute the smart contract, for okay. example, and so on. So uh, we see. Blockchain is one of the future technologies that we need to enable in this overall, um, you know, uh, uh, programmable virtualized right. deployment okay. uh, of uh, applications and services mm -hmm. from India. And uh, eventually, I think it has to be, uh, you know, uh, the use cases that would actually make a difference to people. And uh, as we identify them, we will start supporting. Yeah, them. I'm so, sure. Yeah. It, I'm sure the, the, there is a probably. A, uh, a playing field that you're looking at wherein we, uh, we can extract data but as well as use it for a win-win kind of a yeah. service which can reach the publics at the masses and all yeah. or the customers that Reliance has yeah. you know, probably using the same thing you know data coming in of course but of course the, used for the the mass in, yes. in general yeah. so w with uh, data privacy in mind so uh, of course yeah and, and that itself can be a microservice which makes sure that you know you're yeah, it, uh, of course. Yeah, privacy is uh, is pretty important when uh, yeah. a lot of uh, you looked at the consent and yes. make sure that the person who's requesting it had the access privileges. Yeah, absolutely. Then you actually used it. Yeah, I think so, digital consent makes a lot of lot of yeah. uh, business sense these days because yeah. I think you know uh, 
the Cambridge Analytica happened and a lot of things were leaked out. Mm. Uh, so coming to uh, blockchain as such, because I, I remember reading one of your articles where you said that blockchain can be used for social change, right? And uh, there is a huge amount of, there are a lot of problems here, you know, as far as social problems are concerned in India. Uh, we'd love to know your perspective on, uh, let's assume you know, there are several problems here. What, what problem do you think uh, we should start addressing first or you know in, in a country like India mm. when it comes to blockchain with the using blockchain yeah. yeah I mean I mean the some of the traditional use cases that people talk about are land records and yes. things like that where um, but uh, you know uh, it's more about uh, digitizing the yeah. information now the question is does it have to be on a blockchain or on a centralized database and stuff so but if you have multiple stakeholders uh, you could form a private blockchain for that information. Maybe mm -hmm. some, uh, you know, a new uh, uh, smart living uh, a complex came up with, and it's adjacent to another one. You want to uh, preserve their uh, mm -hmm. information, things like that. So um, those entities, and along with the government and the municipalities, could be on the blockchain. But mm -hmm. we don't need necessarily a public blockchain directly on it. And mm -hmm. there could be a few nodes that are participating on a private blockchain and people can log in through one of yeah. those notes and access the information. So that's one thing. I mean, I think uh, uh, there are things like uh, uh, people, um, uh, education is a good one where you can actually mm -hmm. uh, record uh, your, uh, uh, you know, as you progress through different education Yeah, from entry, entry to exit. Yeah, uh, and a lot of the time, you know, you get mm -hmm. get an offer, let's say, yeah, yeah. and the company is asking you for all the certificates of all your degrees and Once transcripts again. and within a week, and, yeah, you know, every if time. it's all already available, right? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can just share it, right? And then uh, it's not only education, also employment history and things yes, like absolutely, that. Yes, absolutely, yes. If all of that is uh, um, uh, provided, digitally signed and so it, you know, it makes it easier for people to access the data and you know process. save a lot of time and money you know? yeah, so uh, the migrant labor example as well I mean, yeah uh, it, you know people can uh, uh, they or, or laborers can actually get jobs based on the past history mm -hmm. if employers can actually uh, record their information and things like that and hopefully they will get well paid and maybe their families can track them and so on so and, and even with Elderly healthcare, IoT is a big thing, yes, yes. right? And we can uh, provide some smart uh, uh, living uh, um, uh, uh, capabilities where we can continuously monitor the elderly mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, uh, trigger an ambulance uh, um, when um, you know if, yeah, if, if the IoT data yeah, makes a lot uh, says yeah, absolutely. Yes, uh, yes, that yes, hey yes. Uh, something is happening, please uh, yeah. take a look. But as the ambulance comes, I mean, I think we can. Uh, transfer the patient records from um, uh, from the hospital where the records may be to the hospital where the ambulance is taking to the nearest hospital where the ambulance is taking the person to. But then there is an issue with um, putting the data on blockchain, on blockchain first. because then it, the patient records become, will become transparent on blockchain. So yeah. you want to you will keep the records on off chain, yeah. but you will actually. Um, on, on, on the chain, you will record the fact that the information is transferred, right? Uh, and like and necessary so. information. I'm, th I'm sure if you have yeah. the IoT device selling that, okay, this is what the problem is right now, and the relevant data has been sent to the right. The essential and just in time, so that by yes. the time the patient reaches, reaches the other place, the you know, uh, ready for treatment, and you actually, know, otherwise you were actually waiting. Uh, yeah, know, for, for the patient for to arrive the, and then yeah. you would do the analysis there yeah, on the yeah, table yeah. and or, or on the AT. insurance and things like that, if you can process yes. the insurance uh, while the patient is in transit. So I think there are, um, the key thing is that we have a lot of, um, with, with the availability of uh, information and communication technology mm -hmm. now, there's a lot of information that is available that wasn't utilized in the past right? yeah and, and now we can actually use it in real time dynamically to yeah. make decisions whether in the future whether it's electric vehicles and you want to find uh, the nearest ev charger and things yeah, like that yeah, and yeah. so it will just navigate you and things like that so um uh, it, it's going to be transformational yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. i think digital transformation is yeah. has already started and it's going to be like a tsunami is going to come over and mm. take over the entire thing and yeah. Whoever is not taken care of, who doesn't understand yeah. this, will be swept away kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an extremely good analogy in uh, Jasprit Bindra's book, okay, yeah. recent book, the Tech Whisperer. Yeah. He mentions this fact. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, excellent, excellent point made. Healthcare is very important, and you spoke about IoT devices and all. Okay, I think uh, one area of interest that uh, a lot of people are exploring using IoT devices is using IoT on blockchain, mixing them both, and uh, you know, creating something more valuable. All right. right, and, and uh, there are there are things like you know, crowd sensing technologies wherein people can extract data, and they can put it on the blockchain and use in time. So. Are you are you involved in such things? Is Reliance getting into all that? Wherein you know, I two devices can you be you use public data with consent, of course, and use on blockchain for public good. Right, right. So um, you know, uh, the uh, sources of IoT information hmm. may not just come from our network; it could hmm. come from other networks other as networks well. So, data right. fusion uh, will be an important aspect. I mm -hmm. mean, um, the sources of data. Uh, could be different, then mm -hmm. you also have to think about the insights that you get from the data. True. And then, uh, you, you know, if you just have raw data, it, uh, people may not know how to use it. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, some machine learning algorithm could run on that and yeah, provide some absolutely. insights. And then you could, be, you, you could fuse the insights to actually mm -hmm. uh, extract the value. And with blockchain, basically, you know, you can uh, execute a smart contract and then mm -hmm. uh, if you've uh, figured out how, uh, and it does not have to be money, but it could be that, hey, um, maybe some tokens go back and forth kind mm -hmm. of thing and eventually uh, uh, result in some reward. Mm -hmm. But uh, you do actually um, uh, collaborate with each other. Sometimes you give, sometimes you take kind of thing, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it could be, uh, uh, you know, monetizable as well mm -hmm. uh, if there is if two parties want to actually yeah. share and come together on blockchain and share, right? So, yeah, yeah I mean, in, in many contexts, uh, uh, in many situations, it's important to have um, uh, information from uh, different sources to actually take an informed decision uh, yeah. about the user. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I think there is there is a, a, I met a company, which is, of course, they are uh, deep into cryptocurrency related technologies mm -hmm. and uh, and they work on Mimble Wimble, uh, mm -hmm. the protocol and they what they basically are doing is they're allowing they are working on something wherein it allows two cars or two cabs to talk to each other all right and take and and, and share information with each other all mm -hmm. right and uh, there are places where people are collecting you know uh, agricultural data so the weather data so that yes. you know they can inform the farmer Okay, through through the use of you know technology to the IoT and blockchain, mm -hmm. wherein they can inform the farmer that hey the weather is going to change now, so you better be yeah. careful and all that. So yeah, and sometimes you may have information, you may not have information. Yeah, you know, maybe the richer farmer has actually put sensors on the farm. Yeah, and then you can fuse that information with the weather data and yeah. you know, come up with uh, additional information. Maybe that farmer actually has drones rather than satellites, so have yes, more yes. accurate imagery, right? Yeah, yeah. But then you can assign a quality factor to that information that was diffused and derived. Yes. Whereas uh, maybe the uh, farmer who doesn't have all those resources still could rely on um, satellite imagery and yeah. uh, still extract some information uh, and weather information. And, uh, the right and, and still, you know, maybe be a, almost 80% correct in terms of taking a decision of yeah. whether to plant when the rain is going to come and that itself yes. might be good enough. Absolutely. So it is the information at the right time where right. he can take the right, right. decision yeah. for his own farm. As yeah. as well. so, so the quality of information may improve as you fuse more and more. Uh -huh. uh, and, and yet maybe there's as long as you have a reasonable level of uh, uh, utility, you know, when you have yeah. fused it, then you can actually yeah, 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 it's a pretty good point. Utility of the data and fusion of data is a yeah. excellent point. Um, I, I, I happened to you know go through your uh, session here at Genesis DevCon, and you spoke something, and you mentioned a very fantastic uh, you know statement. It says stable coins is the future, all right? And uh, could be the future. could be the future. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> could be the future. Mm. So uh, in that context, uh, you know, were you uh, relating it to uh, an industry-based stablecoin or a central bank digital currency a stable coin? What was your thought when you said that? Uh, give a statement, sir. So you know, I think if you look at um, currency, uh, um, you know, financial transactions yeah. right, in general, I mean, uh, what are you seeking? Uh, uh, with blockchain technology, mm -hmm. you know, do you just want to share information that this transaction happened? Mm -hmm. If so, then the uh, uh, amount could have been debited outside the blockchain mm -hmm. and then uh, and credited outside the blockchain. But the fact that the transaction happened could be recorded on blockchain. Okay. Right? So, 
block, uh, blockchain is providing you the support in terms of transparency, immutability, and all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's been this thing about, and this, these are just my personal views and these things, but um, the, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people, like I said, have lo uh, in my talk lost their life savings yeah, they investing have. in virtual currencies yes, and absolutely, yes. uh, cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, you want to at least keep them safe from that. I mean, the thing is, if you, you just want um, a, a digitized currency and the, and the utility of uh, yeah. using digitized tokens or currencies, uh, you know, with automated processes yeah. and or with ability to share information about mm -hmm. what has happened, then maybe you don't have to worry about uh, you know something that is like uh, uh, something that Wall Street people are uh, wanting because they just want to make money, right? And Absolutely. Few people make money, and everybody yeah, else. I, I think it's it's right? very value driven, Dilip. I think you know people. Yeah started to understand and there were people who were not really educated in the yeah. you know in the real sense of whether you call it cryptocurrency or crypto assets or virtual assets i think yeah. one needs to really understand these the the logistics and semantics of why it is working and, yeah. and no, why it's the, beautiful. Well, i mean the yeah, bitcoin the, theory is yeah, all beautiful right? absolutely but, yes but i mean there, there are a lot of academic papers that are very beautiful <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes people go crazy about some of them yeah but, I, th I think it's uh, more value driven people want to make more money out of whatever money. it is right, and, but right. they don't understand and hence they end yeah. up losing the savings yeah. uh, you know yeah. so we've been trying to do a lot uh, helping yeah. people understand you know uh, yeah. through hard fork and the in the workshops i've been through yeah. as to you know first understand what it is all about if you really want to put money there needs to be, you know, the, an understanding of what it all and whether you can lose value or make make money out of it. Yeah, I mean, the future of our planet could be hundred years from now. It's just one country, one world, one currency, right? Yeah, yeah. and it could all be digital, and um, but it should be traceable. Right now, things like Bitcoin, you don't even know who's transacting with whom, and yeah, things like that. So that's it's the problem. Pseudonymous, and, and so uh, eventually, it may be something very different and. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, um, but Maybe. Uh, uh, you know, it may take some time for that kind of world to evolve, mm -hmm. where we are all one world or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I yeah. don't see that happening yeah. soon or soon. in our lifetimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a utopian thing. Which and there are many, uh, you know, uh, oh. if if you watch Amazon Prime and. Oh. There are many stories on Amazon Prime which talk oh. about a utopian one world and we are traveling worlds and there's one currency which works everywhere. Oh. So, but, yeah. but that currency could be stable, right? I mean, yeah. you're transacting and you're not losing value when you're, just because you're yes, transacting yes, and suddenly yes. all your assets are yeah. and just go crashing and Absolutely. you shouldn't want that to happen. Poor farmer shouldn't be on this. Yeah, right? poor farmer should not be on this. So we'll yeah. have to really be protective on, in that front. Yeah. And uh, But yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of crypto assets and the technology around it. Uh, it just needs to be handled properly. Yeah, that's yeah. The so, Dilip, uh, you know, we are at Genesis DevCon and uh, there have been a lot of sessions which you've attended and there is a huge buzz and a uh, lot of activities within the developer community here. We students from the uh, colleges have come down here to see uh, and, and learn about different protocols and all. Uh, they're probably here because they don't have that exposure in their own colleges. Okay. So, um, my question would be, you know, if we have to really build talent in India, we'll need to work towards having a curriculum towards uh, which, which actually takes us into, you know, proper emerging technologies, you know, a B-Tech in, say, blockchain and, you know, emerging technologies kind of stuff. Any thoughts on those, on that area? Uh, sure. Um, I think um, probably an initial introduction to blockchain mm -hmm. could happen in a traditional course in distributed systems or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And that could the interest of the student yeah and uh, you know so you could have a couple of lectures covering it um, maybe some consensus protocols or performance related mm -hmm. stuff and things like that and um, you know a student could explore some initial project as well as part of that course sure. uh, or it could be in a networking course yeah. because you have a network of nodes like uh, you know mm -hmm. interacting with each other and things like that or it could be related to a game theoretic course yeah. so, so you know some <laughs> of these existing courses could uh, introduce different flavors of blockchain, but I think probably in the final year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, students could specialize, specialize in some of the emerging something. technologies, whether yeah, it's yeah. AI and natural language processing or machine learning and data yeah, science, yeah, yeah. or whether it's blockchain technology. And uh, yeah, I agree with you, we should offer uh, some of the advanced uh, courses, courses related to that in the final year before uh, uh, 
uh, they graduate so that yeah, yeah. they are ready for the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. yeah it's, it could be it could be protocol agnostic. I mean, right, and right. if you really have to understand, maybe catch up a few protocols. I'm sure the yeah. the protocols today will try to tie up with the university and push their you know this thing. I think that yeah. that could be a way in which because they are anyway hiring. I mean, there's a right, lot of hiring right, happening. Yeah. Reliance has started something. Right, right. You know, there's, there's, there are other companies who are doing a lot of work in blockchain. Right. right. So we can see a, a, a huge amount of jobs but Right. Okay. In the and, and you know the protocols are going to keep evolving. So you, yeah, you just absolutely. To get your mind, uh, you know, wrapped around. Hey, what's going on? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, try to understand it, and then, uh, then you will be able to tweak things yourself uh, and make. True, true that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something yeah. different. And, and because you know there are there are projects coming in you know Reliance yeah. is working on it and there are other companies working on it I think e even if there is an internship coming up at the yeah. end of the entire semester they'd probably get to do hands-on work somewhere right, right okay right. I think that will if they have the knowledge you know prior right. to that right. it right. will be very helpful to both I mean, the students yeah. as well as the company which is hiring right. them for internship yeah and, and you know you shouldn't think of blockchain in isolation as well because blockchain technology is right now relevant to many different uses very true and yeah stuff. yeah absolutely yeah. so and even uh, uh, a lot of things are happening which are very multidisciplinary. Yeah. Mm, for you. And just to digress, something like a tiny drone yeah. uh, has um, uh, ha has to be light. Yes. It has to carry a heavy payload, so there's material science in it. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it has four different fans. That's aerodynamics. Yeah, too. aerodynamics. Which you roll pitch and Yeah, absolutely. I understand that part well. Uh, math and physics and then yeah. they have uh, electronic circuitry, the ESC, yes. to control all of these things and whether they're going faster this way so it will turn, turn the and <laughs> like that. So it, you have information coming from all of that and then if a drone has to take decisions from different sources, which sources did it take information and that logic could be in a smart contract mm -hmm. recorded on a blockchain <laughs> to yeah. say hey this is why i took this decision yeah uh, you know and uh, and the uh, machine learning tech will tell them okay this is what you need to do right, right. now take this decision or not right right yeah. so that could be a different microservice absolutely so, yeah. so you can see that there are different technologies all coming together mm -hmm. there is uh, ai and machine learning there's blockchain but there is also yeah. engineering different areas of engineering all coming together to make this little thing fun. absolutely, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's a very interesting, yeah. uh, you know, thought that you have said because I had happened to meet some people who say that blockchain will never be used yeah. in isolation uh, in the near future. They will definitely be, you know, as you said, yeah. multidisciplinary, multi multi tech. You yeah. know, uh, also the drone is talking to the town station, is talking to, uh, it has to take satellite quick decisions, and, so yeah, computer course. science and optimization, wireless communications. Wow, yeah, so, yeah, so many different things happening. Pretty excited. Thing, right? So, you know, it's amazing where the future of technology, whether that or, you know, autonomous vehicles and you basically have the computer in the car which is connected and yeah, the yeah. intelligence in it and, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. decisions <laughs> that you're taking and, uh, and all the data that's getting processed in these, you know, yeah. future smart cities and wow. smart villages and stuff. Some of the data may need to be uh, mm. uh, shared with different people and things like that. And that there, you would actually use a blockchain and yeah, do yeah. the right thing with the right smart contract. You, 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 you sounded almost like a child who's, <laughs> <laughs> who's trying to say a story about you know something very exciting. You're very excited, very yeah, passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the future is exciting, and you know, uh, you know, there is a lot that is going to happen, and we are just not. We just at the you know, beginning of the entire revolution that we are seeing here yeah, of digital transformation. One final question before we end this episode, uh, Dilip, uh, is the future of you know, public blockchains, the growth and future of public blockchains, and I'm talking in particular about India, okay, what exactly, how, how does it, uh, you know, transform, uh, or how is, is it really going to happen in the near future, where we are completely on our public blockchain as such? So I think it might be, um, might require an interpretation of what a public blockchain is. Fair enough. And that the core of it could be a private blockchain with mm -hmm. some government entities and uh, different stakeholders uh, on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the people may be sitting outside it, but they have access to information. They'll have some uh, access privileges only for certain kind of information. Mm -hmm. uh, they may submit information to it. They may retrieve information from it that they have rights to. Um, information that they retrieve might be anonymized and still of utility to them and so mm -hmm. on. Um, but the, um, uh, you, you do not necessarily need uh, every person to actually be directly on the blockchain for like a, 
like a node like a bitcoin kind yeah, of like a, a node okay infrastructure okay. Kind okay. Of okay right but there there may be some use cases where uh, you want to have public voting or things like that mm -hmm. right and so you might end up going all the way to the mobile phone mm -hmm. and then you actually have a truly uh, blockchain network yeah, yeah and then there 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 could be information that is um, um, Uh, uh, you know, stored in a private area on, like, like an arm trust zone or internal mm -hmm. SGX. You know, you have some secure information that, based on that, you extract information and then yeah, uh, participate yeah, yeah. in some um, global, uh, you know, national decision making. Or uh, it's just that the user just does provides a vote mm -hmm. uh, for some, uh, you know, decision, but it's anonymized. And but you still figured out whether you know you wanted to do Brexit or not <laughs> instantly, right? instantly, yes, yeah. absolutely, so, uh, without having to wait for uh, the Parliament in the UK or we, we wanted to take some decision for India. Yes, and instantly you could uh, you know make a request. People all vote, and but it's uh, you know it was securely executed. And absolutely, then, uh, I think I think yeah. voting voting is a is a is a big area where yeah. we can really implement it. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I remember yeah. that, you know when the elections were happening, there was a big campaign by a paper which said that you know we are there are a lot of lost votes, yeah. which are not able to do it because they're not in the constituency that they're, they're registered as voters. So I think it's a but fantastic. But at the same time, though, yeah. uh, you you just need you could have a secure connection to a more mm. trusted server. Absolutely. And those trusted servers are on a on smaller a blockchain, smaller blockchain yeah. network. So you could have these hybrid public-private deployments. Yeah. Well. Okay, cool, yeah. excellent. I think. Point taken. I think uh, this video must be reaching some people who are trying to build something on this, and also the government to think about a few things which can be public and build something on that. Um, Dilip, uh, thank you so much for spending time on Hot Folk at Genesis DevCon, and it was a wonderful talking to you. Likewise, uh, you. love the passion. I think yeah. you'll probably rub off to me in some way or the other. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Mr. Dilip Krishnaswamy, uh, Vice President of the New Technology Initiatives at Reliance Geoinfocom. Uh, it was wonderful talking to him, understand his perspectives of uh, the blockchain as such, the user blockchain, and how it will change the society in many ways, and uh, learn a little bit of technicalities of how you know blockchain really should work. Uh, grateful to Genesis Defcon to having us here. This is Shantanu Sharma signing off. Thank you very much.